What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh, this is my new sweater vest, and welcome to the Minority Mindset, where money minds rethink rich. Alright, first things first, why the sweater vest, Jaspreet? Well, when I was a kid, my grandma used to knit me a sweater vest like this, and I used to wear it every single day, and I haven't worn a sweater vest in so long, and then I found some on sale on Amazon, and here we are. So, you might be seeing some more sweater vests in our videos. Now, getting back to today's topic, financial education is very important. I mean, that's what we talk about every single day on our YouTube channel, but for most of us, the financial education that we get growing up, going to school and kind of just living our lives is study hard, get a good job, save a little bit of money, and maybe invest in your 401k. But if you keep doing what the majority of people do, you're pretty much guaranteed to never have a shot at ever building wealth. I've always thought this to be very interesting, but we're all raised with the idea of being a good, productive member of society. That's why we go to school, that's why we're told to get a good job. But what's interesting to me is none of us are actually taught the different ways that we can earn money. We're not taught the ways that we should manage our money. We're not taught the ways we can invest our money, and we're not taught how to build wealth. We're expected to just go into the workforce, make money, and hopefully know how to use it. And that explains why the majority of people are living paycheck to paycheck. They have virtually no savings, they have virtually no investments, and they are drowning in debt. That's great news for the system, because now banks get to keep you in debt for the rest of your life, so anytime you get paid, you're just working to make your banker rich. And it's great news for big corporations, because anytime you make money, you're gonna spend it and make these corporations rich. But it's not so good news for you, because you don't get to reap the rewards of all the hard work that you put in and all the money that you earned. Yeah, maybe you can drive in a nice car, maybe you get to have these nice things that make you look rich, but you never get the benefit of all the money that you earned and you don't get any of the wealth. The banks and the corporations do because all their money is going straight to them. At this point, the majority of people think, oh, banks are evil and corporations are evil, we need to end them. But I don't want you to think like the majority of people, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to understand how the system works. That way you can stop getting abused by the system and that way you can understand how to win in this system. If you're like most people, you're told to go to school and then get a job and then save 10% of your income. If your family's from India, you're told to bust your butt in school, do nothing except study, 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 get only A's or A pluses, and then once you become a doctor, because you have no other option, once you become a doctor, you can start living your life, but you must also save 60% of your income. I'm speaking from experience. This type of financial planning might have worked a generation ago, but if you try to manage your money like this today, you're pretty much guaranteed to retire broke, and I'll show you why. But before I do, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below. This is one of the most common financial planning calculations that you see. People say something like, okay, I am 30 years old right now, and I want to retire and be able to live off of $50,000 a year. So this is based off of how much income you're making. If you are a high income earner, like a doctor, feel free to add another zero to this. Okay, so you're 30 years old today, and you tell yourself, I wanna be able to retire and live off of $50,000 a year, what do I got to do? But that question really doesn't make any sense. 40 years ago, back in the early 1980s, if you had $15,000, you would be able to afford the same lifestyle that $50,000 can give you today. Could you imagine somebody who was 30 years old back in the early 1980s saying, hmm, let me budget my money and plan my money, that way I could live off of $15,000 a year. Well now, that person who was 30 back in the early 1980s is retired now, or retiring now, and if they were living off of $15,000 a year, they wouldn't be able to maintain that same lifestyle. So no ordering extra guac. Well, I guess that's not entirely correct because if you were 30 years old back in the early 1980s and you're planning to retire now, then chances are you're getting a pension or social security or both to help fund your retirement. But if you plan on retiring in the next 20, 30, 40 years, then you're not gonna get that same luxury. So no guac for you. So before you start doing this financial planning in your head where you're trying to calculate how much money you're gonna need every single year to be able to live your life financially free, you gotta really understand what's going on here and make sure that you're using the money the right way because if you don't and you plan to live off of $50,000 a year and this is how you're budgeting your money and this is how you plan on building your financial freedom, well, when it comes time for you to actually be financially free, you're gonna be broke because what you're gonna find out is in 40 years, $50,000 is not gonna have the same buying power that $50,000 does today. So if I go back to the traditional financial planning method that the majority of people follow, and you're working hard at your job and you're saving a little bit of money, what happens is you're working hard, you have a nice home, you got a nice car, you got your nice things, and you're putting your extra money in the bank. So now what happens is your savings kind of set like this because your bank isn't paying you really any interest on your savings. So your savings are dead, they are flat. But when you're saving your money, 
you're not competing against your neighbor to see who's saving more money, and you're not competing against your cousin Bunty to see who has more money, because we all know that Bunty doesn't have any savings. He's the one that's blowing all his money at Gucci. You're competing against the Federal Reserve Bank, because the Federal Reserve Bank, which is known as the central banking system in the United States, has the power to print money, the dollars that we use. And so as the Federal Reserve Bank prints more dollars, the dollars that you're saving begin to have less value. That's what causes the price of everything else around you to go up, and that's what's gonna cause this $50,000 a year to not be able to afford you a $50,000 a year lifestyle when it comes time for you to retire in 20, 30, 40 years. And so what happens is as the Fed keeps printing money, printing money, printing money, the price of everything else keeps going up like this while your savings and your earnings have less buying power. So you are effectively every single day becoming broker and becoming poorer because there's more and more money entering our circulation while your money isn't growing. It's not doing anything. You're working hard to earn money and you think you're doing the right thing by saving a little bit of your paycheck. But when you save your money hoping to become wealthy, you are indirectly becoming poorer and poorer because your savings keep losing value because everything else keeps becoming more expensive while your savings are not doing anything. This whole concept of your dollars losing value is called inflation. And this is why every single thing in your life keeps getting more and more expensive because your dollars have less value and less buying power. So if you wanna go to your grocery store and you wanna get something, you gotta provide them with more value, more dollars in order to buy your regular groceries. This is why your life keeps getting more expensive. So if you're saving all your money, your money is slowly losing value and making you poorer because everything else keeps getting more expensive. On average, inflation is something like 2% a year. Now, what you gotta understand about this is the Federal Reserve Bank, the central banking system, what I just told you, is working really hard to raise this. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to print more money, add more dollars into our circulation, that way inflation increases by more than 2% a year, which means you can see the prices of everything go up even faster. That means your rent, your groceries, your vacations, your extra guac, you can expect the price of all these things to continue to get more expensive. So now, if you're saving all of your money, well, your savings aren't doing anything, while well, the Fed is working really hard to ramp up inflation, which means make your cost of living way more expensive. Which means if you are saving all of your money, you're playing right into the system's hands and you are gonna end up in the losing side of the equation and you are gonna continue to become poorer while the people that understand money, the people that understand how the system works will continue to become richer. But even if we just stick with the idea that inflation is 2% a year, that means if you have $100 and you put this $100 in the bank today, after one year, your $100 is not gonna have the same buying power that your $100 did today. After one year, your $100 is gonna lose 2% of its buying power. It will only be able to buy you what $98 can today. This is what inflation is. So every single day, all your money is just sitting in the bank and it's slowly losing value. Now, if you're talking about $100, it's not that big or drastic of a difference. But now let's talk about more money. What if you have a million dollars in the bank just sitting there and you think you're doing the right thing because you worked really hard to save this million dollars? Now, every single year, that million dollars is gonna lose you 2% of value. That means after one year, you're gonna lose $20,000 worth of buying power just by doing the right thing, or the right thing, by keeping this million dollars in the bank. And so over time, the value of that million dollars keeps dwindling away because the cost of everything else keeps becoming more expensive. That's why a million dollars today is not the same as a million dollars 30 years ago. That's why people call inflation a hidden tax because you don't even see it happen. It's not like somebody's coming and taking $2 away from you. Today you got $100 in the bank and after a year you might have $100 and a penny in the bank. And so you think you actually have more money but the $100 and one penny doesn't have the same buying power as $100 does today, because in the future, $100 is not worth as much as $100 today. And so you don't see this inflation happening. You don't see it taking away your money from you. You don't see it taking away the value or the buying power that you have, which is why it's a hidden tax. It slowly makes you poorer and you don't even see it happen. This is why the majority of people continue to become broker and poorer each and every day because they don't understand how this works because what they do is they're working hard at their job and then they save every dollar that they can because we're told to work hard and save a little bit of money. So now the question is, what do you do? How do you fight the silent tax and how do you stop becoming broker and poorer because of the system and how can you use it to your advantage? 
Well, the first thing you gotta do is now, when you start making this money, you gotta convert this money into assets. I'm gonna talk about different types of assets in just a second. But what you gotta understand is an asset is something that you buy for the sole purpose of making money. So this is something you're buying to help make you wealthier, to help create income for you, to help make you richer, because these are things you're buying to make you money as opposed to a liability, which is something that loses you money. So things like cars, shoes, clothes, liabilities are things that you buy that don't hold their value and these are things that lose their money. The one thing that I need you to understand about liabilities, if there's only one thing that you get out of this video, I need you to understand this. Our paper dollars that we work hard to earn, these are liabilities too, because our paper dollars do not hold their value. That's why I need you to start converting these paper dollars into assets. Now, let's talk about some of the different types of assets, because you have hard assets and you have paper assets. And I need you to be buying both of these, but you'll understand what the difference is. So hard assets are things that you can physically see, feel, and touch. So these are things that are tangible. This would be something like real estate, or gold, or silver. So these are things that you can see, feel, and touch, right? And so real estate has value because now when you own a home, you own a property that somebody else can live in. If somebody else lives in this property, they will pay you rent, and so now you have passive income and you own a physical asset. Gold and silver are currencies and they store value because in order to create gold and silver, somebody has to physically mine it, and so it takes effort to mine an ounce of gold or silver. Now, paper assets, on the other hand, are things like stocks and bonds. So these are things that when you buy these, you're just getting a paper certificate, right? When you go out and you buy a share of Amazon, now you're getting a paper certificate saying you own a share of Amazon, but you don't really own anything physical or tangible. Like you don't own the Amazon warehouse, you don't own a Amazon fulfillment center, you just own a piece of the company and as Amazon makes more money, so should you. The thing about these paper assets is they're a little bit easier to manipulate and it's harder to exactly kind of see how much value you have. I mean, just look at the stock market. It can go up or down wildly in one day. And so the risk here is that the value of your paper assets could be manipulated. But the good part about paper assets like stocks and bonds is when you own stock, you can exactly see how much your stock is worth today and you can sell your stock in an instant because it's very quick and easy to sell a stock as compared to something like a home because if you want to sell a home, this could easily take you six months to sell a property. But now, thanks to the internet, there are ways for you to get exposure to things like physical real estate without having to buy physical real estate. This is thanks to things like crowdfunding. Now, I'm not going to get to that in this video, but if you do want to learn more about how that works and how you can do that, our team wrote an article on our website, theminoritymindset.com, that explains exactly how to do that. So if you want to read that, I'll link it for you in the description below. But the whole idea by buying assets is you are taking this dollars, this money that you are earning, which is losing value, and you want to convert it to something like an asset, which is going to hopefully at the very least maintain its value, if not create more value. Like when you own real estate, you own a physical property. And if more people want to live in the city where you're buying, then that property is going to become more valuable because there's going to be more demand for that property. And so now this property is creating more value because more people want to be there. And so your rents are going to go up and the property value is going to go up too. At this point, I know some of you are probably typing out, but just please, I'm investing my money in my 401k. Isn't that enough? Well, it's good that you're investing your money into this retirement account. But your 401k is not enough. You have to do more outside of that. And this is where so many people make the mistake of thinking that their 401k is all they need in order to retire and live the life that they want when it comes time for retirement. If you do that, you are gonna be met with an unpleasant surprise. And so that's why I want you to start planning your money early, that way you can live the life you want. The way you do that is now by taking this cash that you have, right, this extra cash, because you gotta be living below your means, and so you have some extra cash every time you get paid, and I need you to convert this cash into assets, which are things that are gonna continue to make you more money, that way you can get richer because of the system and not be the one that's getting poorer. One thing that I do not want you to get confused here is that yes, while your savings will lose value, that does not mean that you should not have any savings. You need to understand why you're saving money. You are saving your money not to become wealthy. Well, at least if you have the minority mindset, you understand that you're not saving your money to become wealthy because your savings will never make you wealthy. If you wanna become wealthy, you gotta invest your money, but your savings do have a purpose. Your savings are there to protect you from an emergency. And so you gotta have the right mindset about your savings and understand why you have them. You need to have savings, okay? You gotta have savings and a bank is a good place to keep your savings, but you gotta understand why you're saving your money. You're saving it to protect you when your kid breaks their arm. You're saving it to protect you when your window breaks. You're saving it to protect you when your AC goes out. Now you have savings, that way you don't have to go into debt 
when an emergency happens. But if you want to become wealthy, you got to understand what's going on with your money. And you got to start using some of your money to buy assets that way your money and your wealth can continue to grow because as more money is printed, the value of your dollars are going to go down and the value of these assets will go up. And so if you own these assets, then you're going to come out on the winning side of the equation. If you don't, then everybody else who understands money is going to get richer while you will become poorer. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on investing your money that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, join our free finance and business newsletter. And as always, keep hustling. But in the long run, what really affects the stock's price is its fundamentals. That's how much money is the company making? How are their profits looking? Are their revenues growing? Are their profits growing? How is the management and are they innovating for the future? So these are the things that really affect the company's stock price over the long term.